Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this tropical discussion for August 27, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from the Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest the Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So the little animation that you saw earlier, um, I thank, I credit Jones RMJ for helping me produce that animation. So consider subscribing to Jones RMJ as well. Um, his channel link will be in the pinned comment below. If you want to consider subscribing to Jones RMJ, you really should. And let's get on with today's video. So today we're going to be talking about tropical disturbance, actually more tropical waves, tropical waves emerging off the coast of Africa. So tropical waves are going to be developing and a potential tropical storm could be emerging as well. Um, could be one potential tropical storm, maybe both of these form into a tropical storm. I'm going to be uh, talking about both of these disturbances uh, over here in the Atlantic today. All right, a uh, little update on Laura real, real quick. All right, 50 miles an hour wind. So still a tropical storm with very low pressure actually for a tropical storm. For what a tropical storm should have, it has very low pressure at uh, 991 millibars. Um, and it is moving in north northeast direction at 15 miles an hour, but a lot of the thunderstorm activity is um, starting to go east of the center because it's encountering some shear now. So that is the latest on Laura. But as for the disturbances here, the northern disturbance, okay, there's two disturbances. One is located that just moved off of Africa right by the Cabo Verde Islands and will be forecast to move in this position. Another storm is located uh, well west southwest of there. It'll be moving more. Um, towards like the Caribbean. The northern one could be moving in this direction. So we're going to talk about the northern one first, real quick, by National Hurricane Center. So it's a westward moving tropical wave over the eastern tropical Atlantic and near the Cabo Verde Islands. It's continuing to produce some disorganized shower and storm activity. Um, there, there won't be good environment conditions in over the next couple of days for development, which is why the 48 hour development says 0%. But we can see some favorable conditions next week as it moves over that central western Atlantic. And that's why formation for the next five days is 20%. All right, so that was this system right here. Now, the southern disturbance has a little bit of a greater chance to develop, not by much, though. We have a 30% chance to develop, of development with this system. Um, we have seen more shower and storm activity increasing today. I'll be showing you that on the satellite imagery. Uh, gradual development of this system is possible over the next several days as it moves west at 15, 20 miles an hour. So kind of like at a similar speed that Laura was moving. Um, formation over two days is 10%, and five days is 30%. So looking at the um, satellite imagery, you can see here is the southern system, right? This is the, this is the tropical disturbance I just told you about. That is this one right here, right? And the northern disturbance, it, the one I told you I was back near Cabo Verde Islands, is located back here. All right, so as you can see, um, I can zoom in a little bit if you want, but I can't zoom in too much or I won't be able to see the map. All right, but here is the tropical disturbance, and you can see it definitely has gained some shower and storm activity. We're starting to see some flare-up of convection here uh, right on the north side of where the uh, low center is located, okay? And... As you can see, we have, again, another tropical wave emerging off the coast of Africa. So these tropical waves could be resulting in a potential tropical storm uh, developing here. Okay, and again, there is also Laura over there. In case you guys were wondering where Laura was, there it is in Arkansas. All right, um, so we take a look at the visible satellite imagery. Um, since, all right, since it is getting towards nighttime, we're right in between the, so it's going to start flipping. This black line will move left, uh, right to left because it is nighttime. Now we're, now we're getting towards a nighttime uh, visible satellite loop, which I think actually does look a lot better in my opinion, um, depending on the time of day. But you can see that it's starting to get, it's trying to get a little bit of rotation in there. It, you can't really see it. Like I said, it's not even a tropical depression yet. So of course it's not going to look too organized. But we're starting to see a little hook there, maybe a little curve, trying to get some um, cyclonic spin in there. All right, but we'll be taking a look at the forecast models as well. Then our other tropical storm, Little less, little less organized, little less thunderstorm activity, but is located back towards the Cabo Verde Islands, and is definitely noticeable on the satellite imagery. All right, so let's close this out. And the current sea surface temperature anomalies. So disturbance number one, the first one, the one that is back towards the Cabo Verde Islands. In case you guys forgot, uh, talk about this system right here. So the first system, all right, the one actually be coming in second, um, is located in some slightly above, above average waters right now. 
um, but it'll be moving into some slightly cooler waters and then back in the warmer waters um, if it takes the track that it's supposed to take right now. Um, both of these, as of as of now, as of 6.15, none of these are invests. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to update on you guys if uh, if they do become invests, right? Um, and disturbance, uh, disturbance, no, actually, I should call this disturbance number one because this is the first system. All right, disturbance number one here, all right, the one that's first, the one that's farther to the west, is sitting in currently there are some waters that are just about average, maybe slightly above average, but just about some average waters. And once it tracks in the Caribbean, and counting some well above average sea surface temperatures, and that's obviously good for development. But the Caribbean is always warm. Caribbean, uh, Caribbean Sea is a good source for not only warm ocean water, but warm ocean water well below the surface and some good cyclonic heat. So hopefully that storm, storm will be looking uh, looking forward to moving through the Caribbean. Now the actual ocean water temperatures. The Sturmitz number one, the one that's farther to the west, is sitting at ocean water temperatures about 28. But if it does track into the Caribbean like it's forecast to, we could be seeing 30 degrees Celsius water temperatures. Some very warm water, kind of like what Laura went through. Um, and where the second system is, by the Cabo Verde Islands, um, waters are about hanging around 80. The northern side of the storm is sitting on a little bit less than 80. The southern side of the storm is sitting on 82 degree waters. But overall, the storm is sitting right over the 80 degree line. So still, I mean, it's not a decent environment for the storm. But as it makes its way west, I think that's when a lot of the 80 degree water temperatures open up and a good opportunity for this thing to develop a little bit more. All right. Now, looking at the wind shear here, um, now for... For Laura, you can see the wind shear is starting to go up, which is why, all right, which is which is why starting the weekend a little bit, and also why the thunderstorm activity looks a little bit less organized. Now, as for the tropical waves, um, the Cabo Verde Islands are right here, so the the second system uh, is sitting in some wind shear. It's not much; it's twenty to thirty knots. It's manageable, but it's a little much, um, especially since the storm is not a Cat Four like Laura was, so it can't really sustain this much wind shear yet. It's kind of like a baby; it needs to grow. Um, now, as for the other system, um, the National Hurricane Center actually has it marked at, I would say, 40, I want to say just above the 10 degree north line. So 11 degrees north and about 42 degrees west. Um, so maybe it's actually, I think it is actually sitting in a little pocket of very low wind shear right now. So I think it, it could have a good chance to develop. As you can see, the storm center is actually located, I think, right here. So it's sitting in a little pocket of less wind shear. Um, moving through a brief period, it could be moving through 20 knots of shear, but then once it enters the Eastern Caribbean, which the Eastern Caribbean has less than 10 knots of shear, which is good, a uh, good developing environment. So that's why I think the Southern system, uh, the one that's moving west, the movement that's into the Caribbean first, I think we should watch that one a little bit more. Plus the National Hurricane Center gives that one, um, a 10% chance better than the other storm did. So this, the first system has a 30% chance to develop the, the second system has a 20% chance as of now. Now, the only thing that those systems will be going through that will cause a lot of trouble for them is dry air. I think that's going to be the one thing that, that could be uh, the fate of these systems. Now, the first system, I mean, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the first system over here towards the west is going to have to go through some wind shear right here as it moves into the Caribbean. But the good news for the first system is, is that once it moves to the eastern Caribbean, and if it were to last through the northern Caribbean, there isn't much dry air in the northern Caribbean right now. Now, the second system which is back here. Oops, sorry, but I don't know why that happened. But the second system back here is going to have to go through a little bit more dry air because the one that's to the south is actually dealing with less dry air. They both have to go through dry air, but the second system will have to combat a little bit more dry air than the first system will. So again, I think that's why the chances of development with the second system are a little bit lower for now. But these storms definitely do have a shot at developing, okay? Um, uh, we'll have to watch as they get beyond the dry air, where, how do these systems start evolving? So the NCEP, the FNMOC, the GEM, the European model, some on, some global ensembles here, um, they're predicting uh, with, with the systems here about a 30% chance of development, 20 to 30% chance of development here. Um, meanwhile, the NCEP, just the NCEP ensemble, the tropical cyclone genesis, has actually anywhere from 30 to 40, but also about around 40 to 50% chance of tropical cyclone development. So that's something to note as well. And look at some of the model tracks. All right, you can see some of the mono tracks do bring this into the Northern Caribbean, maybe through the Bahamas. And one, it already takes it into the Northeastern Gulf and has it making landfall moving up the Appalachian Mountains, which is way too far ahead to tell, but uh, we'll see with that one. All right, um, now this is the same map as the first map, except this time we're not including the European model. This is just the NCP 
FNMOC and gem model um, ensembles, um, as you can see, they actually give it a 30 to 40 percent chance. So I think throwing the European in there kind of lowered the um, the lower the risk of development. So maybe the European model isn't quite confident in this. That's what we can take away from this because since the European model was removed from this and the chances went up, when the European model is included, the chances go down. So I don't think the European model is very confident in this right now. But when but just these three models here have a 30 to 40 percent chance development of both systems. And again, here's another NCEP ensemble, Tropical Cyclone Genesis. Uh, this would probably be the first storm, or the second storm, this is the first storm. I don't know if you can see it, but the first storm has a little pocket of orange. So maybe around a 40-50% chance with the first system. But they do track them both through this region. Um, and NCEP, they actually the first system, they have it tracking through the Northern Caribbean and right over the, some of the islands. Kind of like the similar track to Laura, so... This could be deja vu in both systems. This could be double trouble, all right, potentially uh, for the Caribbean. We'll have to watch. It's a little bit farther down the road for the Caribbean, but we have to focus on can these systems, there's not too much dry air, at least for the first system. Second system doesn't have too much, or I'm sorry, the first system doesn't have too much shear. Um, the second system has some shear, but it's manageable. Um, the only question is can it get through the dry air? That's the big question here. So, GFS model, we take a look at the GFS model and the GEM model. Um, and so, here's the GFS model. and you can see you won't be able to see these storms too well on the precipitation uh, on the precipitation loop, but once I show you the cyclonic vorticity signature, you'll be able to see the storms a lot better. All right, but I do want to show you the precipitation anyway. So here's the GFS model. So I believe this is the first system right here by Saturday morning. Not moving too, too fast. I mean, it's booking, but it's not moving that fast. Notice the high pressure to the north, though, that will be pushing this storm in a more westerly direction. All right, so that's something we'll be watching as well. All right. Then there's the first system. Uh, first system, the GFS actually has it moving right, actually north of the Caribbean Sea. All right, and then the second one will be somewhere around here. All right, over the next few days, it could be some could try to develop out of that. That actually could be a third system. And the second system could actually be here. Like I said, it's kind of easy to miss when you look at the precipitation loop. But this could be, in fact, a third system. Who knows? All right, because these tropical waves could, you know, these tropical waves could break apart and could spawn multiple tropical cyclones. That has happened before. It could happen again. We'll see. Um, let's look at the 500 millibar height to kind of see what they tell us here with the track. So, so as you can see, there are some high pressure systems. This one's actually a uh, decently strong high, moving like this. So that's going to keep whatever is forming down here suppressed to the south and moving towards the west. So that high blocks it from exiting the Atlantic Ocean. That's not good news for the Caribbean. We got news for you. All right, so that high could stay there and it could block. Now the storm could actually go right in between here and go around the high, but um, this is about 90 hours out, so I think both these systems will be moving through the Atlantic by this point anyway. All right, but let's take a look now at the cyclone vorticity signature, and you'll be able to see the storms a lot better now, which is definitely good. So looking at the first system, uh, first system, all right, so as you that, that still can't see it, it is right here. Uh, I would say the center right about here got some strongest convection, strongest vorticity signatures picking up on the eastern side, measuring to right around 27 or so. Um, then it moves to the Caribbean, but the, again, the GFS, maybe that high gets a little weaker, allows the storm to move a little bit farther north. So maybe the um, Northern Leeward Islands and maybe Puerto Rico, all right? Maybe even Dominican Republic and Haiti down the road, potentially. Um, now the GEM model, let's take a look at the precipitation loop for you guys real quick. Um, now the GEM model brings the first system right into the central part of the islands, right in the Windward and Leeward Islands. And it kind of brings the center of the storm right in between the islands. And then actually has a sustainable surface load developing with some very heavy rainfall right there. So the gem model really does make something out of this here. And then it has a movie through Haiti and Dominican Republic right there. Then maybe my weaken a little bit due to the mountainous terrain. We'll see. All right. Now the second system, I really don't see it. This could be the second system, but this looks like a third system that is stalled out. But that could be very well the second system stalling out as well. I right, something to watch. So look at the cyclone vorticity signature with the gem model. As you can see, Look at this. All right. They have an even stronger, a little higher than 27. A nice ball of energy. It's circular. It's round. It looks organized. All right. Then it moves through. And look at this. We see some purples and even beyond that on the cyclone vorticity signature loop here. So and then you also have a very, you have an even stronger high, which is going to keep that low pressure that could form suppressed way to the south through the Caribbean. So that blocking high keeps the low. The low has no choice. The storm has no choice but to move through the Caribbean. And that's not good. All right. And we'll see maybe more tropical systems forming behind that, more tropical waves behind that. 
that is certainly something to watch. So keep it here for updates. Again, subscribe, ring the bell notifications, and please subscribe to Jones RMJ as well. Thank you guys for watching. I am Dweller Dude, signing off till next time. I'll catch you guys in the next video.